first live uh, vodcast slash TikTok live all at the same time. It's great. It's a vodcast podcast TikTok live a thon. Wow, that's a that's a mouthful. I feel like we need to like scrunch that down a little bit. How about Wondering RV Bay podcast episode number 13? How about that? That sounds great. Welcome to the Wandering RV Podcast. This is your bi-weekly source for our stories, our screw-ups, and our successes living the full-time RV life. I'm your host, Kara, the Wandering RV Babe, and this is my driver, Ryan. Howdy! Hey! <laughs> you sounded surprised when you said howdy! <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, uh, I was a little, I, I wasn't sure where we were at yet. I don't understand what you mean by this. Are you very confused? Do you have do you have the the foggy brain, the COVID foggy brain? Is that uh, what's happening here? I don't know. What am I drinking? <laughs> so you're drinking a New Orleans breakfast. New Orleans breakfast. It's a New Orleans New Orleans breakfast. What does that mean? <laughs> so this is a drink that legitimately was on. A menu at a bar off Frenchman Street when we were in New Orleans last year. And I thought it was really funny, and so now that's what I call it. But the only thing that it is is emergency and water. Oh. (laughs) That's it. So basically emergency. It's just emergency, yeah. But yeah, so we're drinking water that has emergency in it to give ourselves more Vegemita vitamins because we have had COVID for the last week and a half. It's been miserable. It has. It has. It totally derailed all of our plans for last weekend. We ended up just lounging around at home and not doing anything except sleeping and watching TV and movies and stuff like that. And we're still in Miami. So we're like in the hot spot where we want to have fun. I, know. I got out earlier today. We uh, we did get out. We were both absorbing the vitamin D, sitting in the sun. Yes, just at our site. We were not around anybody else. Um, but we, yeah, we got some good vitamin D. That actually made me feel a lot better too. I, I did. I felt really good afterwards. Like I was laying there and I had this like really cool idea that I wanted to go work on. And so I was laying there and I was like, do I want to go? do it before I forget, or do I just want to lay here? I took a nap. Did you take a nap? I totally uh, took a awesome. nap while I was out there. We have a, a tanning kind of lounge chair. It's really nice. It's actually something like, so it lays all the way out, and you can even turn over, and it's got a spot to put your head. And so I did that and totally took a nap earlier today. I thought I was going to wake up with a sunburn, but I did not. You did not. Nope. All is well. It was actually a little cloudy at times today, too, so... Mm-hmm. It was kind of like nice. You got a little bit of vitamin D, and then you kind of get a break for a second, and then a little bit more vitamin D. So it was, it was good. It yeah. was, a, it was a good day to be outside. It made being or recovering from being sick more tolerable. Yes, for sure, for sure. But yeah, if this, it, if we're gonna get COVID, this is the place to get COVID because at least we can get out, still get some sun, um, and enjoy. The nice weather to a certain extent even though we can't go do anything yet until we are symptom free and test negative thank goodness for not being in the up in the northwest in the freezing cold that is true that would have been terrible but yes that's why our voices maybe sound a little funny uh is because we are both still recovering from covid i know exactly how we got it too oh it's it's a horrible story it's it's terrible so we were out the first weekend that we were in miami we went out we did a whole ton of stuff we had a blast we talked about that on our last episode but while we were walking along one of the sidewalks i don't remember if it was while we were in little havana or while we were walking along south beach i forgot which a lady was walking past me and she turned her head and coughed and coughed like right on me And at the time, I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, that's kind of gross. Thought that was kind of gross. And when we got to a a restaurant or whatever, I went into the bathroom and kind of like washed my face off and that kind of thing. But like, other than that, it wasn't, it wasn't anything I thought of. And then four days later, I start showing symptoms. I thought it was just allergies. Um, Just kind of treated it like an upper respiratory infection. I tested negative. On that first day and then you got sick 
Oh, I was um, out for the count. Yeah. I was I, I literally like got out of bed, came out to the living room, and went back to sleep on the couch. Yeah. We still thought that it was uh, an upper respiratory infection. We both just had it because there had been some like crazy pollen that had come through this area. And so we both thought, like, we're just reacting to that. And then after four days when we both were not feeling better. Well, actually, I started feeling better and then I got worse. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to test again. So I tested on Monday, and sure enough, it was positive. You tested. It was positive. And we were like, damn it. <laughs> Three years, we didn't get COVID. Yeah, we managed to, by just dumb luck, avoid it the entire time, and now we got it. But thankfully, our symptoms, even though they've been miserable, we haven't had any major complications. Nobody's had to be hospitalized or anything like that. So um, we definitely did get a milder version of it which is nice yeah it's that has very much been a blessing it's a cough break hold on <laughs> I, I need to have like the mute button on ready for that um <laughs> well that's that's what we've been up to that's where we're at uh that's kind of the what's been going on but uh for our episode our actual podcast episode yes uh the main topic we wanted to kind of talk about is travel day prep and we have a very specific scenario coming up here in about a month and a half yeah. where I'm going to be beelining it from Florida back to Texas for a family event, and you're not going to be coming with me. I'm not, no. So we still have about a month and a half here in Florida, um, but the trip overall is four solid days of travel, and I work full time and just really didn't want to have to take days off of work simply to travel. And so thankfully, uh, we were having that conversation with your parents and your dad was like, oh, well, if you want to fly to our house, I'll fly to where you are and then travel with Ryan back. And so that's what we're doing. So I'm flying in so that way I, I don't have to miss any work um, and spend a, you know, a day off just traveling and not actually getting to do anything super fun. And then uh, Ryan's dad is actually gonna come down and travel with him for four straight days. That's gonna be pretty grueling. Um, I think the most that we've done is a three day in a row travel day. So, and that was tough already. So four days you're gonna be wiped, but, um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing, which means that we both typically have a job on travel day. Like we both have a checklist of things that we do and because I'm not going to be here, I actually have to train you on how to do my portion of the checklist because you're going to have to do it all. Let me let me explain to you my checklist. If I can see it, it's probably not done. So like I'm handling the power, the sewer, the water line, all of that stuff getting hitched up to the truck. So if I can still see the fifth wheel, the kingpin, then it's not done yet. If I can still see water hoses laying on the ground, it's not done yet. And so all of that stuff kind of like, it, that's all I really think about is visually, do I see items on the ground? Cause I'm doing everything outside. She does almost everything inside, unfortunately. And- And the outside stuff that I do is not readily visible. So we wanted to talk through what our travel day prep is. And more specifically, she's going to be teaching me what she does what i do so starting off the day before we always try to get a little bit done the day before yeah i think one of the biggest things that we do the day before and we learned this the hard way actually has nothing to do with our checklist overall but because travel day is such a stressful exhausting day like mentally emotionally physically we try to call it an early night the day before. So we don't do a ton of stuff going out. Um, we try to hydrate well. We try to get good sleep the night before. Uh, and we learned that the hard way a couple different times. Three times in a row, three travel weekends. They were every, every other week, so they weren't the like three weekends, but three travel weekends in a row. We went out for some reason the night before to go check out some new bar or check out some new winery or whatever. And they were good stops. It, it was it was really, really good, but we were day drinking, evening drinking, night drinking, and the next morning it was like We, we felt it. 
We you felt you it. knew you probably shouldn't have done what you did the night before. Not like full on hangover. Like if it was a bad hangover, we're gonna we'll find a way not to be on that on the road. But like full on like uh that we probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, yeah. So now we have a very strict rule. It's an early night. We hydrate. We eat good. We sleep good. Um, all the things. If you hear noises down below or you see like a little nose that pops up from the bottom, that's our dog. She is very much wanting some attention right now. So um, I'm petting her as we're talking. Um, but that's one of the big things that we do. The other big thing that I do the day before travel day is kind of just tidy up. Um, I put things away. We put laundry away. I'll do all of our dishes um, that night. So Generally, I try to stay on top of dishes anyway because our sink is small and there's not a lot of places to put dirty dishes. Um, but I try to get all of the dishes done the night before because when we're getting up the next morning and getting ready, we have to get two showers and then hit the road pretty quick. And that could take away from the hot water that we have. So I try to plan in advance of that. Um, the other thing that I do is uh, just anything that can be ready the night before that I know we're not going to use um, the next morning, I go ahead and take care of that. So we put all of our bungee cords on things that need to be bungee corded and tied down. Um, I'll pull out any foam padding that we use for like our computer monitor or um, the desk or just different things like that and go ahead and put all that together. Um, we have some foldable uh, electric bikes, and so we go ahead and put those up, and we kind of bungee cord those in place as well. We actually store them inside the RV. We don't mount them on the back um, because our bumper is not rated for that type of weight. No. Uh, and so, so we just kind of do all of the things that we can do that's not going to be undone the next morning um, before we go to bed. The last thing that we also do is we both check the weather forecast. We do that on a fairly regular basis anyway, but especially the day before travel day, we check all of the weather apps that we use. I think between the two of us, we use four different weather apps. Yeah, I think so. And we look for uh, mainly wind and then any kind of inclement weather, rainy weather, anything like that. So we are just prepared and we know in advance. Um, if it's bad enough, we'll change our plans. But if it's not, then at least we have an awareness of, you know, are you going to have a tailwind or a headwind or a crosswind at any section along our journey? Um, so we're prepared for that and we can take a break beforehand and get fresh for that leg of the journey. Yeah, so one of the things that I'll do is I, I usually stay up like a little bit, well, a little bit. I'll, I stay up about an hour or two after Kara goes to bed. And so um, as I'm going to bed, I'll usually, so I've got a computer that's hooked up to the TV and uh, an HDMI cable that's kind of run down one of our sides and then um, some cabinets that are left open so that uh, heat get is allowed to flow in and out. And um, I try to go ahead and get that stuff closed and unhooked and my computer put away in my backpack because I like to take my backpack and all my stuff into the truck with me yeah that's a good call out. just kind of a it's one of those things where yeah if we get into a wreck the truck's probably not going to be in great shape either but the rv's really not going to be in a great shape and you, i kind of just like the idea of having my backpack with all my really important stuff my laptop for editing my laptop for gaming all that stuff just put into the truck so that way i know it's there i know we have it and if something happens on the road and we need to like stop off and I don't know, say for some reason we have to go stay at a hotel. Something's wrong with the RV. It's nice to already have my backpack out so we're not trying to get to it. So that way I, I can work on stuff if I need to. So it's just really kind of a useful idea of bringing some of your most important, crucial elements with you. We always bring an iPad with us so that way that has cellular connection. So that way we can kind of have a big screen view if we need to look at stuff on a map or whatever. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have our phones, so we try to have a few of those little big items. Uh, sometimes Kara likes to re record TikToks while we're at a gas station or whatever, so she might bring the microphones with us. Uh, so that just kind of fun little things like that, just the small little items. But we try to kind of prep all of that. I try to prep my backpack, and her, she preps her backpack the night before as well for the electronics and stuff that we're going to take into the truck. Yeah. Um, do you also... You generally if you can try to 
top off with diesel and I don't know how often do you do death? Um, uh, deaths probably maybe once every month, month and a half, just because we travel so infrequently anyways. Like, yeah. uh, I, I, I try to, like, run death down to about half and then go ahead and refill, because death does go bad, and it sits, in a, it shouldn't be, in theory, go bad sitting in the truck, but you never know. You just hear all those horror stories. So, I, I, death really only happens about, uh maybe once a month usually um i don't normally focus on getting that filled the day before because it's a lot easier just to fill def when we're at a truck stop and just go ahead and do it on travel day we're already gonna have to stop for gas at some point uh no matter what but diesel i do try to make sure that we're at least three quarters of a tank or more and sometimes i'll go ahead and look at the map and kind of figure out uh, where's the first gas station that i want to stop at and kind of plan around like having make having enough diesel before we leave that we can just go and stop there so if i don't need more than what i already have to get to that stopping point eh, not a big deal and you have to pee every hour and a half anyway so it's true it's very true <laughs> it's a built-in potty break for you if we're not a hundred percent full when we leave it is absolutely a built-in potty break <laughs> um so i think we kind of got through the day before um when we get to the morning of Y'all, we have this down to a science. From the <laughs> moment that I actually wake up and get up out of bed till the moment that it is pedal to the metal, we're hitting the gas and driving, it's two hours or less. So we've pretty well got the travel day prep down. Um, the, the very first thing that I kind of do is I actually have a checklist. It's in our notes app on Apple. Um, so we both have it, it's shared between the two of us, and I have it as a checklist so I can like click the little buttons to check things off as I go off my list. That is clutch. And then anytime there's anything new that breaks on the RV or I forget something um, or you know we get something new and we need to add something to the checklist, it's really easy to just slot it in. And the way that I have it broken down is I have it broken down by room or area of the RV. So I have all of our stuff that I check for in the bedroom in one section. And then I have everything for the bathroom. And then I have everything for the living room and everything for the kitchen. Um, and that really helps to just stay on track with all the things that Ryan was saying that like, they're not visually obvious necessarily, but it has to be done in order to make sure we can get everywhere and not come home to a mess at the end of the day. Which we have had, we've had issues. There's things we've missed. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, there's things we've forgotten. There's a, uh, been cabinet doors that have broken when we've, when somebody started bringing the slides in without checking, you know, things like that. It, I yeah. mean, we've made our mistakes, but that's, that's why the checklist has been so useful. And it just keeps growing as we do this more and more. We never take anything off. We check every single item before, well, she checks every single item before we leave and make sure that it's done and like so it's kind of like a double check so i kind of you know visually as i'm getting ready i'm kind of looking at stuff and doing things that i see and then i go outside and i start working on the outside she's then kind of follows me up and then just hits everything and makes sure every item is checked off we either did it the day before we did it the morning of um whatever and then she comes outside after she's done with the inside and she's able to sit there and keep going on the checklist on the things that i've already done and kind of checking over me and then once that's done, it's slides go in, we hitch up and we're on the road. And I mean, that two hours, it sounds like a long time, but that's two hours of like she showers get, and everything. Well, you, you usually <laughs> like you get up, you sh take a shower, you make coffee, mm -hmm. uh, you let the water kind of heat back up again. Then you wake me up so I can take my shower. And then you're kind of sometimes puttering on, around doing a few things, but you don't really start until I'm done with my shower and you've already been drinking on your coffee and then I get done with my shower and I'm just kind of coming through hitting the rest of it prepping my you know tea for travel day and then I'm outside and I'm getting the rest of that done and we're on the road like it's it's two hours from when you wake up but it's really only like an hour and 15 minutes of actually doing the stuff because there's just shower time and wait time as the water heats up because we don't have a big hot water heater yeah yeah but I mean we yeah we don't have a have any trouble with having hot water for two showers we just have to time it out right yeah um but yeah i <clears throat> i do as much as i can um but there's still things until we're both ready for the day there's certain things that i can't finish up like i can't 
um, lock down the fridge until he finishes getting his tea for the day. Things like that. So I, I do what I can. Um, that is one point too, is the night before, no matter what I do, I do not check anything off of my actual checklist the night before. So that way, when I'm going back through, I'm checking everything off and I'm doing a double check visually to make sure that everything's done and taken care of. Um, the other thing that I do on the outside that's not readily obvious and not visually obvious is a couple things. One, um, he's terrified of heights. So I actually am the one who gets up on the roof of our fifth wheel and double checks the roof every single time before we leave. I clear debris off of the top of the slides. Uh, we do not have types. Uh, we don't have slide toppers. I know some people do and they love them and some people have told us horror stories about them as well. Um, I don't feel like we're missing out because we don't have them. And in fact, I kind of appreciate the opportunity fairly frequently to get up and just visually inspect the roof of the RV as well. So I kind of just take that as an opportunity to just double check, see if there's any seams that need to be, um, you know, taking care of any sealant that needs to go on any surfaces. I check the, the actual seams of the roof just to make sure that there's not anything that's going on there and then obviously clear off the slides and then I'll come and pull the slides in. Well, one of the new things we haven't, uh, well, I guess we did this last travel day. The newest one is you got to take the Starlink off the top of the, uh, oh, the yeah. RV now because we have a, we got a mount for the top of the RV. Yeah. And again, I am very, very, very terrified of heights. Um, I don't know if, if any of you have ever gone up in the St. Louis Arch. You'd think it's it's just an elevator, and and you're just looking out some small windows. You'd think that most people would be fine with that, even if they are a little fear afraid of heights. He was terrified. He did it. I did it, but I will never do it again. I did not realize. <laughs> like I kind of, I was like, okay, it, you you were telling me about it, and I was like, it's just elevators essentially. You're just taking an elevator up. It's no different than being in a tall building. I've been in tall buildings before. You do stay away from the windows though in I, skyscrapers. I, I, Yes, I don't go near the windows. I kind of like, yeah, not my thing. <laughs> so yeah, so the top of our RV is a no-fly zone for Ryan. Um, so I take care of all of that. And then, yeah, we just got a new mount for our Starlink, which is really cool because it mounts on the top of our RV ladder, which is great. Um, but I have to get up there to take it down because he would not be able to do it. Um, so I do that. And then the other thing that I do is I go around, we do not have an automatic tire sensor system for all of our tires on our RV. We're looking at getting one soon, but we are doing a ton of research to determine the one that we really, really want first. And so in the meantime, my job is to go and check all of the tire pressure in all of the RV tires. Yeah. Cough break. Cough break, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, those TPMS systems are great. Uh, honestly, if you guys have any recommendations, please let us know. But we're kind of, like, we're of two minds about it. We've, we like both of the two big ones. We just haven't decided on which one. But uh, speaking of things that you do on travel day that is really, really important, but we kind of have to talk about it a little bit, is, so we got this really, really great suggestion, and I think we talked about it either last week or the week before, about putting ice down the toilet the uh, day before, or the day of travel day. Yeah, we've done that almost since the beginning. Yeah, and so we have an ice maker in our, in our refrigerator. It's awesome. It's really, really great. Uh, so it kind of depends on how many travel days we're having kind of affects whether we do that or how much we do that because I like to have my tea on travel days which means I need a little bit of ice and we don't like to use a bunch of our fresh water if we don't need to when we're just staying somewhere overnight for a night uh, we don't like to do water hookups we prefer to mooch dock with just electricity if possible um, and so what we'll kind of talk about is whether to use all the ice or when to use all the ice because you can use the ice you're really best off using the ice when the toilet is completely empty you don't want to use it when it's full so obviously right before travel day hopefully you're empty but then that second travel day you're not and so you definitely don't want to be adding more ice in because that's not really going to help because the idea is the ice is hard and can kind of scratch some stuff off and then it melts and turns into a liquid and so you just kind of get a good flush from your black tank. So just keep that in mind. Putting ice down the toilet is really, really great, but only do it for your first travel day after your tank is empty. 
the things that our viewers have to think about that we never thought about when we had a sticks and bricks is is really fun and that's one of them that i always think about is like man normal people non rvers would never think to put ice down their toilet but we do we do all the time when we get somewhere yeah so like once we arrive at our destination I don't really have a checklist for that part of the journey just because at that point it's kind of like everything's kind of obvious like I'll go ahead and you know once he unhitches and he's like getting everything um, put together on the outside um, I'll wait and, and kind of help you out as much as I can because um, it's easier to hook everything up outside when the slides are still in. Right, yeah. I don't, it, it's not like, it's not impossible to hook up your sewer and your water, especially not the water. The water's super easy. It's just a nice because our sewer line, uh, sometimes depending on where the, the sewer hookup is, it's just really convenient to be able to like make a nice straight line and set up the slinky so it's all lifted up while the slide's not there, so I'm not having to crawl under there, try and get it all arranged. And so it's just kind of convenient. Hey, let's, before we, before we pull the slides up, before we do anything inside, let's just get sewer, water, and power hooked up. And then that way we can go inside, we can relax depending on the day, you know, may get the AC up and going, start cooling the RV off, or vice versa, if it's cold, get the heat up and going and warming the RV up. Yeah, and then once we do pull out the slides, um, the biggest thing that I start doing is I actually clean the RV at that point. I know there's lots of people that clean the RV before they travel and then some that clean it after they travel. Because we have slides and our slides come all the way in, which means the outside comes in, uh, and even just on travel day, when you're when you're going inside the RV to take a bathroom break or different things, like it can just get really dirty in there, especially when you're throwing the stairs up and stuff like that. So um, I go ahead and dust and vacuum and mop when we first get to a site, as long as it hasn't been too much of a grueling travel day. Um, I will do that and then just you know obviously start putting the house back together. So taking down all of the foam padding and tie downs and things like that, putting that stuff away um, and just getting everything back together. And then the biggest uh, other thing that I do is really carefully opening the pantry door and the fridge door. <laughs> I usually will use some of our blankets to kind of pack everything into the fridge, depending on how full it is or not full it is. So that way things don't jostle around and break. But depending on how bumpy those roads are, since especially since we have a rear kitchen, so everything at the rear of the trailer just bounces even higher, um, you really have to be careful with that. So uh, I open that all very, very carefully, hope that there's not a mess that I have to clean up, but hey, I'm already cleaning at that point. So if there is, then I just add that to my <laughs> cleaning checklist and off we go. I don't know how much for uh, for the travel days that I don't have you with me, I'm not sure how much cleaning I'm gonna do. Yeah, probably not. But I will be very careful when I'm opening the fridge and the and the pantry because I don't want to have to clean. Yeah. And that's gonna be really frustrating if we're doing four travel days in a row, me and my dad, without you, and I. And then I've got to figure out where you even keep all of your cleaning supplies. Yeah. Um. We and we've had some weird stuff happen. Like we've had a a wine bottle fall from inside the fridge before and so we went to go open the fridge door it fell down and thankfully hit my foot which hurt like a hell but <laughs> it didn't break the the bottle which was great um but yeah there's been some just crazy stuff that happens occasionally and um there's things too that i will think oh man i'm sure this is gonna fall or i'm sure this is gonna make a mess and then it doesn't and other things that you know, they've been sitting there for the entire time. They've been on several travel days in the same spot. And then all of a sudden it picks today to be the day where it makes a mess. So you never know. You never know. But usually when we arrive, that's the other thing that I'll do is I'll, um, I'll come inside, get everything kind of powered back up. Cause we have Starlink, T-Mobile, Verizon, a um, couple other little things here and there for internet. And so what I'll usually do is I'll kind of start testing the campground Wi-Fi. Uh, T-Mobile, um, we'll, we're starting to get better about like going ahead and pulling, having Starlink out and ready to go on track, you know, when we arrive so that way I can go and test that and make sure that we've got good, you know, line of sight. Like here where we're at right now, Starlink's not doing much. 
or mostly relying on T-Mobile, but it was good to, you know, go ahead and have it out and ready to go just in case something happens. And we test, I test all of the different internet speeds just to kind of say, okay, this one's going to be good for this. This one's going to be good for that. Um, uh, and then I, the router that I have, I can kind of pin priorities and kind of tell it which one to use first. And so I'll, you know, say, Hey, like this is the best one to use for general purpose, or maybe I won't. Sometimes I won't put the best one there. If it's not really good, then I'll try to ha pin a, the second best one as kind of the primary. So uh, if you if one of us needs to do something important, we can connect to the best one and use it at, at highest speed without anything else interfering. And so sometimes I'll take the best one and I'll actually remove it and just say tell you and myself to basically connect to the best one when we need actual like real good solid internet for something yeah and depending on what the tree coverage situation looks like i'll either go and put the starlink uh, on the mount on the top of the roof um, or sometimes we'll just put it on the ground in front of the camper it just kind of depends on you know what's the best position for it to be in yeah sometimes you know where we've only got one mounting spot right now we want to set up another one but where that's at like sometimes there's going to be a tree right there which there is where we're at yeah that blocks it for a certain portion of the time and so it's just going to be better to have it on the ground just because there's less tree coverage there so so yeah so that is our travel day prep and then kind of when we get to uh wherever we're going to be at our kind of taking t taking and tearing everything down hopefully that's helpful uh to you let us know if that is helpful if there's any helpful suggestions in there um and let us know if you have any helpful suggestions as well or uh lessons learned because we can always uh learn from each other along the road well next i want to talk about what we do while we're on the road yeah, that's a good call out. Um, you know, we talked about how we prep the RV. Now let's talk about like what happens on the road. So obviously I'm driving. Um, not obviously to everybody, but I don't I don't like to drive at all, and there is absolutely no way I'm going to drive the RV. I'm just it's not something I have an interest in, and it actually just terrifies me. So Ryan is our driver, um, and he drives 99.9% .9 of the time and he tows a hundred percent of the time Yeah, so while we're on the road obviously kind of one of the biggest things that a lot of people do is they prep their 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 map kind of in advance trying to look at all the different roads figure out where they're going what how they're gonna get there um, So what we like to use is three different things so This is gonna be kind of our pick of the week um, one is we have a, a, a some trucking trucking map apps on our phones which is really really helpful um we also as a like hardcore backup have a trucker's atlas in the truck at all times yeah we have like a hard copy trucker's atlas in our vehicle it's really helpful because you can see what all roads are designated for truckers and with how big our rv is we're as tall as with our ac units as an 18 wheeler and we're almost as wide so if an 18 wheeler can go there then we can go there and so we kind of use that as like the bare minimum like if the 18 wheeler can go we can go so we look for some of those routes if we need to but our most recent person the blah, blah, blah. our most recent addition to that is the garmin rv the RV Garmin, as they call it. And they have a trucker Garmin, they have the regular Garmin, then they have an RV Garmin. And all it really does is allows you to plug in your length, width, um, your weight. Kind of weight, and all of that stuff. And it basically just uses that same information that's available in the trucker atlas for weight, height, and width to determine the best route to take you somewhere that keeps you on routes that you can go. So there's lots of roads out there that are honestly, they, you know, have like a a five ton limit and it's like well we don't we shouldn't be driving on that road who knows why they have that five ton limit some of them do it for purposes to keep delivery trucks out of there which is fine some of them actually do it because legitimately the road can't handle much more than that and that's it's it's too heavy we've we've actually come on that a couple of times pulling our rv and we saw a sign that said uh five ton limit and we're like um well we're over Can't that go there <laughs> and i don't know why they're doing that if they're just trying to prevent commercial vehicles or not and i'm not going to risk that so we've had to change directions and that's part of the reason we got the rv garment is we ran into that once in a real bad way and it was like okay we need something to help us out we thought we had a good route going 
and it ended up not being a great route. Well, we got... So that time, I remember that distinctly because we had the Trucker's Atlas and we had the uh, truck map apps. But the problem was we were in New Jersey and so it was the, the East Coast. All of those roads are like really, really tight together. So it was really hard to decipher what road we were on versus what road we needed to be on just with the Trucker's Atlas by itself. And then we were kind of getting into spotty coverage. And so the map apps weren't working 100% either. And we kept getting diverted because of construction. Well, the diversions, most apps um, like Google Maps, Apple Maps, and then most diversions are going to gear themselves towards just regular traffic. And so there were a couple different times that they diverted us onto a road where we were too heavy for a particular bridge that went over that road. So that was a bad thing because then we had to just figure out on the fly where to go to divert back to then get back on our route. And then another diversion on that same route. That was a terrible day. It was, um, it was miserable. That was a miserable day. That same route, we got diverted and there was a bridge that was too low for us. And so luckily we saw it in time and we were able to get off on the highway in order to be able to avoid it. Um, but those are definitely things like that'll rip off an AC unit real quick and cause a lot of damage to your RV if you're not aware of and looking out for uh, weight limits and height limits uh, on your route. And the RV Garmin is perfect because it only gives us a route that it knows we can actually handle. And if a, a diversion has to happen, it will divert to a route that it knows we can go through. And so it's really, really helpful. And that just kind of takes a little bit of the planning out of it. Obviously, we still keep our Trucker's Atlas around. We keep those other apps around just in case we need some sort of backup because we actually did have the Garmin fail on us once. It froze. It froze while we were in the middle of Miami yeah. on the highway and, yeah. and we didn't know where to go. We were like, it, oh crap. It froze and it was saying like 16 miles straight and I and after a little while, I was like, wait a minute. It's been saying to stay 16 miles straight for a while now and finally, like, I... I I don't know what we did. I think we just unpowered and repowered it. Came back on. I was like, oh, okay. Now, yep, we totally missed our turn. All's good. Like I said, we just barely noticed it. It's only once, and it did need a firmware update, uh, which I need to do before we leave Miami. But we will absolutely <laughs> make sure that we stay on top of those firmware updates yeah, from now on. <laughs> just to make sure. So that's really, that takes care of like the planning and route phase. The other big thing to watch out for on the road is when you can kind of in your mirrors kind of check your tires uh be watching for small cars obviously motorcycles very very dangerous watch out for the motorcycles when you can cause a lot of damage uh, some of them are really really good really really polite they know that they're small and they do a good job some don't really care and just kind of take up the whole road acting like it's their you know that that's their whole life and i don't mean like taking up the whole road like you know they can't take up the whole road, but I mean like just kind of being in and out of blind spots. Very zippy cars, and yeah, and there's a and then just small cars in general that are super zippy. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and one of the things that we do too, I know, I, I know there's a lot of couples that do um, different things on the road, but I stay awake the whole time. Um, I don't go in my own headspace or anything. Well, sometimes I go in my head, own headspace, but I do try to help watch out for those things. So I will actually call out um, if there is a car on the side of the road or there's an emergency vehicle that's pulled somebody over on the side of the road, debris, things like that. I will try to call that out to Ryan just so that way he's aware of it. He may already see it, but it's just another, another pair of call eyes. out. Yeah, another pair of eyes. Um, and then the other thing that I watch out for is fuel stops. So I'll ask him, you know, like, hey, when do you think you want to stop? And then I'll get on, um, we use a, a discount program called Open Roads. And so I'll get on that and look for the next fuel stop. Um, and I try to look for places that are going to be along the same side of the road that we're already on. Sometimes that doesn't work out, um, but I'll go ahead and watch out for that. And I'll try to make sure he knows because that's obviously not going to be on the map app that he's using to plan our route. Um, I'll go ahead and make sure he knows if it's an underpass, an overpass, things like that. Um, and we generally try to target truck stops because we're so big. Uh, and so usually we don't have any trouble with fitting into those areas. But 
Uh, we definitely, we love Bucky's, but when we're towing, we avoid it like the plague because it's just so busy and there's so many zippy cars that it just becomes dangerous for us to try to maneuver in there. Yeah. Um, so that's our travel day. Um, so one of the questions, uh, one of our fan questions that has been asked is, how many hours do you typically drive in one day? Um, okay, so that is... That's a good question. It's a great question. So it's a hard question to answer. So we, I try to target about 300 to 350 miles, which I think comes out to usually around five hours, four to five hours in a regular car mapping app. So like Apple Maps, Google Maps, that kind of thing. So basically comes out to around four, maybe five hours. I don't remember exactly, but it's... 300 350 miles <clears throat> the reason i do that is because typically travel takes longer you n never know what kind of random traffic you may run into especially on some of the back roads or going through a city and that's just going to add time and so really what 300 miles uh, three to 350 miles is some place that we can make with only having to stop for gas once and technically we can get up to 400 miles with only you know one tank maybe more but that's just a nice easy number that usually means that we can leave by 10 a.m and be there by 5 p.m and that that way we're getting there before the offices close that way we're getting there before dark before dark especially you know obviously we just hit daylight savings time but previous to daylight savings time it gets dark early in some areas and so trying to be there by five o'clock is the best way to guarantee that you are going to be there before dark and so that's kind of the goal is 350 miles is guaranteed with a you know a couple of bathroom breaks and at least one break for lunch to get us there by five o'clock no questions asked even if there is traffic or issues along the way yeah the other thing i think is worth noting and we will also even though we have our rv garmin up we'll have apple maps or google maps up as well just as another point of information for us on along our route but almost without fail however long apple maps or google maps tells you it's going to take if you are towing an rv it's generally going to take anywhere between an hour and a half and two hours longer just for the road portion of it. That's not the teardown. That's not like setting up or um, hitching or unhitching or anything like that. So they're long days. And that's part of the other reason why we try to target three to 350 miles in a day is it's already going to be a long day. There's already going to be things that you're not going to be able to account for. Um, that could happen on the road and it's helpful to be able to just build in that extra buffer yeah and that's that's it that's really that's kind of what we measure and so it's not uh, a matter of hours for us it's really just a matter of miles and kind of looking at the map and figuring out don't get us wrong we've had to do long days we've done eight nine ten twelve hour days before they're not fun they're not i don't fun. recommend it <laughs> and we generally try not to do them but sometimes it's just it, it there's some reason that it really just needs to be done that way and so when it does we've we've risen to the occasion it's been fine we've survived we did two 11 hour days in a row over a travel weekend once and it was exhausting but it was really nice because we got to get there early and have an extra weekend that because we basically plans had changed and so we were going to lose a weekend where we were going and so by leaving early or going earlier and not stopping mid at a midpoint we were able to get there earlier and have an additional weekend to go do some stuff while we were in town and it was it was really beneficial i'm glad we did because a uh, little miss over here hurt her back and so that first weekend we ended up being there she wasn't able to do much anyway so yeah. i'm glad we had two weekends because it ended up only being one yeah 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 that actually worked out really well and worked out in advance of what we knew was going to happen so um so yeah i mean it and that was one of those days where the first day it was long, but it was fine. Uh, like the road wasn't bad. There wasn't a ton of traffic. The second day was actually worse, um, even though it was about the same amount of time because it was just grueling traffic the whole time too. So um, yeah, not fun, but doable. It, it's doable if you're up for it. Well, awesome friends. Um, thanks for listening. We'd love to connect with you on all of the social medias, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, uh, all the stuff, uh, or via email as well. So podcast at wanderingrvbabe.com. Send us a question, thoughts, ideas, travel suggestions, things like that, and we will see you next time.
Thanks for joining us. This was a lot of fun. We've been re-watching Burn Notice uh, because we're in Miami, and so we thought it'd be kind of fun to re-watch Burn Notice while we're in Miami. Um, so when we get done here, we'll probably go ahead and watch a couple of episodes before bedtime um, and just hang out. It has been interesting. We actually did go... Uh, so if you remember the, the show at all, um, the lead character's name is Michael, and his mom's name is Madeline, and her house is one of the primary uh, locations that they film in and in one of the spots that they do a lot of stuff in. And so um, we went and actually drove by the house because the house really does exist. And there's really people there. Like it's, it's actually somebody's home. Um, so we drove by it and it was kind of fun to just see the house um, from when the show was on air.